industrial espionage. Sketch further to the history of a certain unnamed individual. You may have wondered dear reader at the rapid accumulation of such seemingly endless resources in under a decade. The methods are somewhat unsavory to any encumbered by the least sense of ethics, but were nonetheless indubitably effective. A syndicate of highly focused, aesthetically and genetically and surgically enhanced androgenes, psychoanalytically trained culturophile highly sexualized blackmailers, also of the subscribers, a pyramid scheme, a nebula of frustrated sensation-seeking Siberian, Eastern oil belt and jet stream oligarchs, virtual and practical dictators and autocrats, industrialists, financiers, lawyers, multinational current and ex-minister come CEOs, Hollywood actors and producers, twin barrel popping turbaned princes and frazzled media moguls and psychotic rap stars, basically all those with sufficient resources to shift their finances between offshore tax havens were targeted by the bureau set up in Puerto Rico to handle such shenanigans. There had been several noticeable incidents and a few deaths, a car crash in a Marseille underpass, some candidates strangely over-emoting at a rally. Caught up in the razzmatazz of floating signs, delusional ticker tape confetti that had never once touched the base of any actual demonstrable signified, and several highfalutin evangelicals and lower status politicos becoming conceptually confused, spatially dislocated mistakenly dropping their microphones or keeling over at the podium writhing, whining and drooling like felines in season at high prestige international broadcast events, ostensibly from, nervous strain or overstimulation. The code of, conferences were productive always reported as synthetic endorphins, stimulation compounds and electronic interior sensory excitation devices ricocheted spikes of alpha waves to the pleasure centers of their brains and erogenous zones, only two commercial plane crashes. The high premium of the service or added value was that these stars indulged themselves in the thought that they were members of an almost occult organization of the world's greatest sophisticates and pleasure seekers in the secret fetishistic fantasy realm that this system of activities implied but did not actually embody. The utter hyper-exclusivity of it all. The secret exhibitionistic thrill of discreet public orgasm in front of millions when in fact the real primary function of these various devices, and negotiate strategies was as covered sonic surveillance of these individuals and unknowingly subservient global organizations and data streams, made them feel loved, desired, or at least paid the proper attention they deserved with the microscopic cold curiosity of an synthetic supermind craving some initial form of derivative but cognitive identity redefinition. It had begun ostensibly as a simple system for erogenous play over long distances, and was quickly seized upon as a useful platform for various engineering-based erotofixation groups in California, Switzerland East Germany and the Far East and more unexpectedly in the West Philippines, Brazil and one of the greenish-brownish belt post-industrial car-parked boroughs of Northampton, England. And so it was that after receiving reports of one of his offshore enterprises being investigated by the Gogol and the so-called, Freedom Press, wildly mistaken insinuations of it being a huge, pro, state, organism comma and not without a little schadenfreude that it was, that he was reluctantly forced to mildly, richly discipline his head of security, a certain Mr. Rolero Olaru. Furfag at the Marrakesh office for suspected espionage-oriented activities remotely and, on camera as a warning to the other staff and all security details by interrupting his private tome of on-camera erotic anonymous ritual stem sale enactments and narrations oddly in an assumed Irish brogue by discreetly hacking into the account and upping the plug stem voltage by 500% and introducing an oscillation frequency of a sort tooth wave varying voltage bursts between 20 and 160 Hz thus synchronizing primary and secondary alpha waves to produce an hour-long exhaustive rolling loop continual orgasm, pleasure or unpleasure. The line became demonstrably thinner, and the monitored point, a pebble duly dropped into the numerous private waters, interdepartmental memos, and breathless info black chatter and flitter posting ego streams.
secret inventor of the electronic but bra pneumatics and the mobile application, and most concerned with the possibilities of human expression and, being a great admirer of Caris Crosby and, the essentially aesthetic concept of the cantilever device in all its vast philosophical permutations he had determined to celebrate her legacy for multi-gender oriented sports and leisure wear, genital support and precognitive communicational enhancement equipment purely as a sideline, or personal pet project. Leaks to the press of his blueprints for an app-controlled mini-motor-driven cantilevered testicular and phallic communication augmentation and physical support had not gone unnoticed. It both improves line and definition, optionally volume or bulk, and, light years in advance of the basic developments on the lines of the codpiece, jockstrap or sports harness includes a revolutionary extra physical communicational element never before even postulated by the innumerable enthusiasts and engineers seeking to innovate the design of the brazier device, never any consciousness or possibility of expression of nipple erection state in these garments never mind gelatinous excretion amount and temperature indication he spluttered in fury throwing piles of papers to the floor and stamping his feet in an unfortunately characteristic infantile tantrum, code name the geek's trap, not just a yes or no indicator, but a maybe, a temporary orifice participant order preferentiality indication, an activity, passivity mood signal and a definitely not beacon, all incorporated into the psycho-pneumatic nano-complications for the high-level undergarment connoisseur. With Android and iPhone app patent, and wranglings, with two innovative Savile Row tailors and a notable American traditional workman's denim trouser manufacturer pending. Give me a stable exchange rate and I will move Wall Street. At a mere $9,850,000 per annum for full private VR and trigger access and notification of forthcoming events on mainstream media, strictly hush hush, the pilot for a new reality television venture appeared for various transdiscretionary transcontinental focus groups, represented as a media fuck-ups compilation show, but where the actual audience of financial elite subscribers were ostensibly able to remotely, genitally and, through trigger keyword, previously embedded willing contractual hypnosis psychologically stimulate famous athletic persons and various blackmailed and willing celebrities using covered erotostimi toy devices in various prestigious social situations in public places under the watchful gaze of multiple global media and hidden cameras starting at $30,000 per spike or frequency burst, determined by status and potential event market value monitored, the potentiality for registering approval or disapproval of content was oddly, only actively utilized on 2 out of 32,295 trigger event transactions, over several decades, prime ministers passing out at the podium from trying to suppress signs of multiple sustained orgasm, presidential candidates oddly, over, emoting, actors in chat shows jumping around on sofas talking gobbledygook under voluntary electro and chem stem combos, and in recent months alone several members of parliament, seven well-known rugby players, in unison, the surprised-looking boogieing host of an American chat show, 17 American and continental news anchors and reporters in war zones on various networks, a Namibian and a Brazilian archbishop and six high-ranking members of the underground drone-making meme-carrying Filipino ritual fetish execution and culture destruction squads, whilst conducting live snuff videos online for the various low-IQ Theopolitico pervert network organizations rooted in the Middle East and spreading mental pornography all around the world at the speed of light like a digital fungus. Diversional aversion to perversion of a version of subversion as it was slyly referred to, on Monsieur E. L. Vidal's algorithmic, a, i, generated hypothetical, posthumous parallel sensor stream, or, blog. And, under considered advisement, on the cutting edge of the various national obsessions of highly repressed identity normalizing cultural conglomerations, a dazzling multiplicity of highly sublimated, highly sophisticated, delineated and focused often unconscious fundamental motivations were to be repackaged and reinvented for ever multiplying status seeking consumers. And a range of new conceptual products developed. Photographs of tongues tasting live of pate.
Elvis impersonators in arm swallowing races. Remote sticky triggering competitions elicited by unconscious by word, image associations by electrostim gamblers. And improbable word combinations placed the by the controllers, which when said in the real world, would effectively alter the structure of reality itself along the W and F1 axis. A panoply of innovative imaginary object, subject orientations for consumption, expensive party game kits and executive toys, and totemic coded signals subtly indicated in magazines and on catwalks in Marseille, Kyoto, London, and Los Angeles. Montage in some strange memory recollection of one of the characters, to release from the stresses of work, and as a little light exercise he would indulge daily in Eleven's Greco-Roman soily beast wrestling, emerging afterward panting, still highly aroused, slimy and naked and beaming from ear to ear from the squealing and grunting pen covered in filth and singing in his croaky high baritone in collages of elegantly constructed multi-denominational post-Freudian operatic graphic transhistorical porno blasphemies and turn down the blaring VR acoustic with the words God silence e Mozart. Scatological cunt whooping, now that, is experience. And spitting gobs of hair, soil uncooked human placent wind vegetal excrescences from his bleeding lips and giving his arm to the doctor for a quick germicidal swab and psychodaptive developmental antibiotic jab and a quick toweling down by his valet. Now, picking a bit of spinach from his teeth, time for my protein fix before lunch. He questioned, politely clicking his heels with end with a curt brush and bow, from under a perspiring brow eyeing Alexei, his amply mustachioed studded, leather-jacketed Husserlian masseur and only confidant modestly who, juggling the wireless internal probe and remote, now bulging in his pocket, with a habitual, disinterested shrug and punky disgusted turn of the lip, nodded with a fatigued expression and rolled his eyes in exasperation and glanced at his platinum Rolex, and so, a filthy arm fell about his shoulders, and they headed for the private gentleman's Turkish baths quietly chuckling and muttering between themselves further and delicate, and artfully considered Satan obscenities, as freshly disassembled pieces of solid light sim carcasses are thrown into a waiting holographic white van for photonic recycling. The unblinking butler, valet and cleaning staff return to their duties, lavishly compensating and quietly ushering out the Romanian extras picking up messy medieval Japanese and Hindi animal masks and gelato silicone physical prostheses, having catered for the needs of five Roman Caesars, the pre-Reformation papal court and that of the Borgias, the New York and Alexandrian Towers, and the court of Charlemagne, and of course the at the not unduly referential or ritualistic dinner parties at the Andalusian Villa of, and yes, the charming, Mr. Hughes respectively.